Hi everyone, on Life Made Civil, we're going to show you how to repack trailer bearings today. The general rule of thumb is to repack them every 10,000 miles or every year, whichever comes first, but always refer to your user's manual in case your setup is different. After chalking the wheels, lifting up your trailer and resting it on a floor jack, remove the wheel and it will expose the brake drum. Put something underneath like a towel or some cardboard or a catch pan before you get started here. Now I forgot to bring a hammer, so as you can see I'm just removing the dust cover here uh, and sometimes you gotta improvise. So I have a wrench extender that I'm using as a hammer. If you have someone else, go for it. You just need to loosen it off and then ultimately pop that off so it can expose the castle nut which will be holding the bearings in place. Alright, so there's the castle nut. You can see the grease is it's dirty, it's black, uh, it's old, and it needs to be replaced. A piece of metal just came out. I want to try to pull this off. All this one thing. Okay, so what I'm going to do is put this cloth around because I want the, the washer and the bearing and all this to come off kind of together. There's the brake drum. A little dusty in there. Grease is a little dirty. Let's go over. The outer bearing comes right out along with the washer and a little lock washer uh, and the castle nut obviously. The inner bearing here though, I'm using a seal puller and you basically, it's got a sharp end, you stick it under there, apply leverage, hold one end of the brake drum and basically Use some elbow grease until it pops out. That's the inner bearing seal that we're going to reuse. I'm not planning on replacing parts, just going to clean everything up and repack it unless it's in such bad shape that I actually need to replace the part. Oh, I scuffed it up, but I think it's still usable. So there's that, the seal goes in basically that way, and then this is the outer bearing, or sorry, the inner bearing. But anyway, this is the inner bearing. So just looking at it, it looks like it's in perfect shape. Um, no, it's not coming apart, it moves a bit, because, so I guess that's normal. This is the uh, outer bearing, it's smaller, and same thing. It looks like it's in really good shape. There's no marring, there's no pitting. It rolls nicely. It's not coming apart. So I think we're okay with just repacking those and reusing them. I'm gonna clean out all the grease out of this. Uh, and then I'm gonna have to clean it with brake clean because you don't want the grease in where the brake um, drum is. But basically, uh, take this. Again, not a clean job to take all this grease out. If you use the cloth to do this, it's just going to move it around. It doesn't actually take it out. So you're kind of left with using your finger for this at first to get the majority of this grease out of both sides. Absolutely disgusting job. So where are those gloves? Bring lots of towels. So it's about this. That's one side of it sort of clean. Flip it over. Other side, and this is the side that the smaller inner bearing came out of goes in this. Only goes in one way. I'll show you that after, but same deal. You're basically using your finger to get out all the old grease. Not a big deal, clean out a bit. Washer. This is 
apparently what locks the castle nut on. I didn't realize, I think that's what I broke. Now I know. Uh, this is the outer, sorry, the inner seal here. This is the inner seal, I mean the inner bearing, sorry. Perfect, but getting it mostly clean, very clean. All right, so that's all I really want. Okay, so here are the parts. The smaller bearing here is the outer bearing. It's held in place, so it goes in, and then it goes on to um, the axle, like with that. And then this is actually the lock, and then the castle nut goes on top of that. On the other side, you've got the inner bearing and it goes into the bearing that way and then this seal goes like that to keep it in place and now we're going to repack these bearings with new a wheel bearing packer so all it is is this thing you threads onto here you put the bearing on you go on top of that and then use a grease gun so pop this on there spin this down as far as it'll go So now once you start seeing it come out the bottom, you're seeing the dirt, the dirty grease come out. Just put that down for a sec. Keep squeezing. And you can see red start to come through. So that means the, the clean grease is now inside that bearing. You, you've pushed out the rest of the dirty grease and you see the red coming through. That means it's clean grease in there now. What happens is you're pushing all the grease in and all the old grease comes out. So what you're left with there after you clean off that old grease is new grease in that bearing. Just loosen this back up. Whichever end's gonna come out. Again, this is a bad tool, so you can tell it's coming out the bottom, which is still gonna work. So see the grease here? So the stuff on the outside is the black, and it came out of this. So when you squeeze the grease in, it pushes it in, hits the top, comes back down, and it pushes out the dirty stuff to the bottom of that bearing. And so now, you've got a bearing that's fully packed with basically clean grease. That's the last of the dirty stuff that was just sitting there. And that's why this method, when you get a good tool, that's why this method is preferred because it's a much cleaner and nicer way to get new grease into there. Now I'm going to repeat that bearing packing process with the smaller outer bearing. So now we gotta grease the inside of this and grease the spindle, I mean the axle over there, and put the bearing first. Basically, take grease, just gonna start lubing it all up inside there. Like I said, there's, there's no way around that this is a bit of a dirty job. So, if this is not for you, you don't wanna get your hands dirty, wear gloves. And if you don't wanna get your gloves dirty, Call someone else. <laughs> okay, so basically you're putting just a healthy amount of grease all over. And the grease does two things, right? It obviously lubricates so the bearings roll more smoothly, but it also reduces heat. And so when this um, lubrication breaks down because of water or dirt or time, uh, you're also creating and allowing more heat into here, which is going to cause metal parts to, and bearings, of course, to fail over time. Okay, so there you go. I'm going to do this on the other side. Same practice, just, just put the grease in. There's no specific amount. There's no kind of best approach other than to really use your fingers uh, and put a healthy amount of grease inside so it's completely lubricated. time it kind of goes on this this whole axle part but really I just need it over here um, you can see there's some there's pitting right here which in general you don't want to see that that's not ideal um, it's not too bad yet but we're gonna have to keep an eye on that <laughs> It goes in only one way, so the, the smaller end of the cone faces inside. So you just drop it in like that. And it's there. 
it's happy. Never hurts to add grease. The seal is going to come in right away here. Um, and the seal is actually going to absorb some of this grease as well. Now, I'm going to put the seal on. And what I need to do is either get a socket that's the right um, overall width or this diameter, or use a uh, piece of wood, anything that helps me basically hammer it down uh, together. So all edges are being hammered down at the same time instead of one edge and then the other. I got a bunch of sawdust. Oh no, bad idea. Use a clean piece of wood, okay? Future reference, clean piece of wood is a better idea. All right, so that is how you repack bearings, put it all together. And now, basically this drum is ready to put back, I'm just gonna wipe my hands off, but this drum is ready to put back onto the trailer axle. This thing goes into the bottom elm. Yeah, that's better. It's like I'm trying to, like it seems easy to turn right now, but when you have leverage, it's going to be easier to turn, of course. But you get it to the point where it's basically tight. And then you gotta back it off. So like this. It's still too loose, I'd say. It's still going on quite a bit. Okay, so now. So you can see here that it's moving, but it's still pretty tight. So basically I find the spot where it's tightened up and then I'm gonna back it off a little bit so it can roll a bit more freely. And for reference too, before I took this off, I had kind of spun it to see how smooth it was rolling. And I'm gonna basically match it up. There's a little tab here that I basically need to bend down and it's what prevents the castle nut from spinning freely and backing itself off while you're driving on the road. It's the same concept as a cotter pin which you have on some trailer bearings, uh, castle nuts. In my case, it's basically just a part of the second washer, the tab you bend it down and there's no cotter pin. It acts as the cotter pin. And then this can't come loose like it's. Loose. And it's basically spinning at the same sort of rate that it was before I had repacked the bearings. Keep in mind, it should spin freely, but because of the drum brakes, you always want a bit of drag on it. So I'm happy with this, and I will periodically check the hub temperature when I'm towing. Thanks for watching the video, and like and subscribe if you found this helpful.